Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about dashboards in SAP Blazor. A couple of months back, I followed the Express article about how integrating the DevExpress uh, dashboard on Blazor WebAssembly. And then I used the same approach and implemented it for Blazor server side and then on SAP Blazor. After that article that got a lot of traction, DevExpress published it. Uh, how to use uh, the dashboard designer and viewer into a SAP app. So right here, you see we're using the JavaScript dashboard control, and they are working on the Blazor counterpart. And I think that in the October or September, when 21.2, I believe, uh, is released, that will come with the dashboard model. But in this moment, there isn't. So I was looking at this uh, ticket where Bonti, uh, actually, Jose, I don't know if you remember, we did a video uh, about one of his tickets before about integrating the dev extreme grid or the dev extreme control yep. in the SAP Blazor part. So, so he's asking about the project, uh, the famous E1344 that is changing database and runtime, but also integrated with the multi tenant dashboard. And right here, they are storing the dashboard in XML. And if you see, I believe in the end, there is a sample for entity framework core and so on. So I haven't reviewed this ticket uh, in depth, but that got me thinking because we did, I don't know if you remember, Jose, a similar approach, but storing the dashboard in the database. So we follow this other ticket and this other example about how to save the dashboard to the database. And pretty much we created the, the table on hand and then we have all the queries that we needed to do and so on and so on. So let's review the project for just a second. So we have, as always, our custom uh, or Blazor application that, if you remember, this is not the more updated version because DevExpress already have an official one, but this is, was our first one where we were saving a cookie. Mm -hmm. But this is, a, in this case, it came really handy because I can get that cookie that it was the database name to use it to set up my data source on the dashboard. So I have my, again, my custom loan where I remove the, I fix my connection string. And then I have my dashboard component, exactly uh, the same as we had in the video about using dashboard in SAP Blazor, about the video, about the article about using dashboard in Blazor. And of course, we have our component that is using that component in our application. So where things start getting interesting are different. So we created our own database uh, dashboard storage. And in here, pretty much we are passing what is the connection stream that we're going to use. So we have the database name on the cookie, and this could be any identifier, and then we point to the right connection string in the app setting. So with that one, and of course, we already told that we went and created the dashboard table with the OID and so on. So we can see here in our database, and let's look for the thing that I passed it, dashboard table, OID, caption, and then we have our block to store the, the dashboard layout and then pretty much we use the method of add dashboard and then you see we're actually passing the sql that we need load dashboard we select the dashboard that we need we have a get available available dashboard info so we know what are the dashboard that are available for us we have the safe dashboard where we're gonna update the dashboard that we want and so on and so on now if we go to the our to our startup, that's where we are adding our dashboard controller and so on. So right here, you see we're instantiating our uh, dashboard storage. Then we are setting that dashboard storage to our configurator. From there, we are passing the create data source storage. And this is also really nice because in here, we are again selecting what is the connection string that we're going to use and creating the dashboard XPO data source. That means that I don't. I only want them to create dashboard from the class inventory part. I only want them to create dashboard for the contacts and so on. And we're gonna save it so it's available for us when we run the, the dashboard. So from there, the, the other thing that we need to do, we have to configure the data connection. And if we see here, we do a similar approach. And the important part here is that every time that the new client, the new user logs in with a new database, we're able to detect that and pass the new connection string. And if you see here, we're doing the same. We're passing the key, that is the key from the app settings. And in that, we are able to give that connection string name to that XPO data source connection parameter. And we need to, we need to do it like this, because if we do something like 
connection string directly because we are using the JavaScript dashboard control that it will be on the client, it will be not secure. They can access our, our connection string. And not, and not only that, the dashboard control will give you a warning saying, hey, you shouldn't use that. And it will block you for doing it. So we do have to do it for the connection string name. And uh, there is a way to do it. I think that there is a Boolean or a flag that is allowed on secure something, but mm -hmm. not recommended at all. So don't go that route. And the last thing is like we need to, uh, in the custom parameter, put a unique uh, cache parameter down that way. We're going to kind of trick the system and we're, not, we're gonna delete that cache every time. And that's because we need the configure data connection event to get triggered again. So every time it's not like, because as, as we're doing a server application, we don't want the risk of a dashboard being accessing another database. So we need to make sure that it's happening. So with that one, that's pretty much it. If we run the application now, we can create a dashboard. We can see that it's getting safe in the database. And if we switch databases, it will save to the right one. And it will only be allowing to give uh, data sources to the correct uh, runtime configuration. So, let's so in, in the end, Javier, you're looking for the connection strings in the settings. Exactly. By name. So, by name, by name. So that is happening on the server. That there, mm -hmm. there is not security risk here. We are only giving the connection string name, the key mm -hmm. that is on the app settings, and that is being taken care of by us. So on Estrihoche, almost we have a homemade implementation of the dashboard module for SAF because it's storing the dashboard on the database, mm -hmm. it's changing database and runtime, so it has a lot of uh, flexibility. It's not the, I'm looking forward still to the origin. Official, official release. So if you see here again, we have contacts, inventory, anything. So if we go to the dashboard, as we have seen before, it will bring that dashboard control. And right now, let's see that we're going to create a new dashboard. If you see, we have the two data sources that we mm -hmm. created, one for the contacts, one for the inventory, and then we can create one. One thing that uh, I didn't do in that moment, but we can do it right now, is like, we can take this create data source and find what is the CSS class. That is the X dashboard data source action. And we pretty much in our CSS, we're gonna say display none. Because we don't want them to be able to create another, to uh, exactly. Because let's take this none for a second and let's see what is the problem with that. Let's delete that. When we create data source here and they choose database, they have access to all the connection stream that we have mm -hmm. in our settings. So they will be able to access other- Any uh, that we have there. So that's not the, the idea. We're gonna select them, give them the, the XPO data source that we want, and we're gonna encode, tell them to which database they should point. But mm -hmm. besides that, pretty much again, we're gonna say customer, and we're gonna select a pie, and we're going to uh, put anything, the city, and the argument, the city, uh, doesn't matter. So right here, you have like a quick dashboard and if we save it and we go to our database, we have a new dashboard right here. Pretty good, right? Yeah. All Actually, right, it's like a really, really neat implementation because uh, like even like with some small tricks like CSS, you can hide whatever you don't need. So that's like really neat. Like so no, many layers of customization. Again, it's everything done from scratch. We're creating the table on our database. Then we are creating our, our data sources. Then we are actually invalidating the cache so it triggers the event. And then we are doing all the queries by hand, update, select, bring me all the dashboard that I have. And I believe that is a, and it's, it's fitting inside the example about changing database at time. So can you do like a dashboard connect? Well, you have it there. Yeah, it's not the the, the most beautiful dashboard, <laughs> but it, it works. Yeah, but I mean, the, the thing is that um, there are so many ways to integrate components in South Blazor in general that it's like, if you know the tricks, that is your oyster. You're free to do whatever you want. You can definitely do anything you want. I, I'm amazed of the thing that we're going to be, be able to achieve for the South Blazor. And, as uh, we're gonna be making more videos about this. So if you guys have any topic or anything you want covered, just let us know and we'll go over it. So until next time, Safa.
Bye.